Hello, hello, Hannah the Suburban Witch here. Today I am unboxing the Oracle of the Witch. In today's unboxing, we are going to look at the cardstock quality, the packaging quality, the image or illustration quality, how much I like it or don't like it, anything that's sort of vibing or not vibing, and just get an overall feel for this deck. If you're new to my channel, I'm Hannah the Suburban Witch, an intuitive tarot reader and astrologer, and I love bringing all of my witchy content to you here on YouTube. I'd love if you would subscribe so that you can stay tuned with all of my fabulous videos and definitely check out my playlists because everything is sectioned beautifully and you can find exactly what you're looking for. So this deck retails for $24.99 US and it is published by Rockpool Publishing, which is an Aussie publisher and I love supporting that. Let's peel off the plastic. So apparently this deck comes with 44 cards and a guidebook. I do love packaging that is solid and sturdy like this. It's not going to get too wrecked with use over time. However, it is a slide off box, which means that, you know, it's just, if you put it the wrong way in your handbag, it's all going to fall apart. All right. So immediately, I mean, the color scheme, very black, red, white, very dramatic. I like it though. Some nice detailing on the inside of the box. And the little papery thing, at least it's paper. That's good. That's good. That's an improvement. It smells very freshly printed. Oh, look at those edges. <laughs> Fancy, shiny red edges. I like that. I like that. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, that's the back. This is the backs of the cards. Reversible too, which is good for an Oracle deck as well as a tarot deck. Any deck. I like reversible. Size wise, I mean, it's a 44 card deck, so it's actually fitting quite well in my hands. I will do the shuffle test shortly. On first glance, we can see that color scheme continues on. And that is a deceptively thick little guidebook. So the cards are numbered one to 44. Each of them has a word at the bottom, I guess, for the theme of the card and another word underneath it. Midwife, herb garden, spell casting, high priestess, high priest. So we started with Diana, Hecate, Aradia. So we've got a lot of the goddesses shown here in the cards. Very female focused, although there are a couple of men that we see in here, but not a lot. Images are simple, but the border is fancy and I like that mix. References to spellcrafting, such as candle magic, sigils, not magic, and the maiden mother crone aspects. Even a reference at the end on card number 39 to witch hunts and persecution. At a first glance, my brain is already reeling with what I could use this for. And that's the thing we want. We want a deck that is usable. We want one that inspires us to use it. And we want it to be practical. And I can see this being a very practical, handy thing to have on hand. Now for the shuffle test. Okay, I think it shuffles really well. Whilst it is big, there's not too many cards. I'll try it vertically. It's a little bit easier with a vertical shuffle, but overall it actually shuffles really nicely. I really like the way the edges feel. The cardstock is, it's, it's all right. It shuffles well. Um, it's not too sticky in that regard. 
but when you do try and spread it out I think it depends on the surface you're using if you're trying to do it on a table that's you know slippery it'll all just sort of move as one but if you did it on carpet it would move really well I'm gonna call that a 50 50 deck because for example my trusty handy dandy Rider Waite Smith deck spreads beautifully on any surface like there is no resistance and then I have things like my dark mansion tarot which will not spread you have to force it along the whole way because it's such a matte sticky deck this is like a 50 50 deck some surfaces it's okay some it's not it's not the best spreading one but it's not too bad so let's do a little rating all right I'm just gonna pull two cards for some advice for what I need to incorporate in my life or my craft right now so I got these two cards. The first one is crystals, amplification. The second one is sabbats, celebration, which is interesting because yesterday on when I'm filming this, yesterday was August 1st, which is in bulk. However, I've recently moved up north to Queensland. And when I look out my window, when I'm walking around outside, I see no evidence of a season change. When I lived in Victoria down in the south, the blossoms came out around about this time, all of the beautiful blossoms, and it signaled that spring was coming and I would bring all those blossoms in and place them on my altar. Now I see no difference. It feels like it's been spring the whole way through winter. It's just not cold here. So it's been a bit confusing and I actually didn't celebrate in bulk. It's almost like I didn't know what to do because it didn't feel it outside me. So this could mean for me a way of I guess tuning into the sabbats and how they are here or celebrating them regardless of what's around me which kind of feels against the grain i don't know i'm gonna sit with that crystals are great i always love using crystals so i'm gonna go out and grab some ones that feel like they're calling to me and start to utilize them a little bit more to amplify what it is i'm wanting right now let's see what the guidebook has to say it says i stare at you intensely so you feel my energy wishing to assist you call me and i will come so which of my crystals are staring at me who's given me side eye huh so the guidebook refers to a light side unveiled and a shadow side unveiled. I would presume that would be whether it's reversed or not. It also includes an incantation for crystals. To amplify, we should unite. Crystals shine, boosting the light. Used in healing, ritual spell, increasing power very well. Crystal magic is worked with harm to none, so most it be there. It is done. And then it gives a little bit of advice around different shapes of crystals and how to use them. It's very practical. When I look up the Sabbaths card, it actually includes a list of all of the Sabbaths and their dates for both the Northern Hemisphere and the Southern Hemisphere and what that means. Super handy. And I like how practical this guidebook is with these cards. I think I'm gonna like this deck. I think I'm gonna use this quite frequently and I'm really excited. I can't wait to review it for you all, but so far, very happy with this unboxing, very happy with this deck. So that is all for our unboxing today. As always, stay tuned for the review and I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world today. Bye for now.